Hello viewers, welcome to the Hour of Grace, a ministry of Abundant Grace Christian Center, a multicultural church and a multi-ethnic church, presenting the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to our community. We call it the Palace of Prayer and Praise, where the vision of God continues, where God makes beauty out of ashes. We ask you to join us tonight as we fellowship together. May the Lord richly bless you. He remember, he remember the life of leprosy. He remember what he was, what he was then. And now look at me. Now I can have the freedom to go back. I can now do my business. I can now, oh God, oh God. He said, no, 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 no. I have to go back to this man. I have to go back to him. I have to go back. He came to Jesus. The Bible says he fell on his feet. He fell flat on the feet of the Lord Jesus. Humbling himself. I told you what hinders us from not giving thanks is pride. Pride is a very, very big problem. Pride of our status. Pride of what we have in the bank. Pride of what we, we are in the society. Pride of what is attached to our names. But this man gave up. Fell at the feet of Jesus. And said, Master. I want to thank you. Even before he got down there, he, the Bible said with a loud voice. He, with a loud voice, he was shouting. He was glorifying the Lord. He was glorifying the Lord. Came to Jesus and cried out to, to him, Master, Jesus Christ. When he came to him at his feet, the Bible says, my goodness. Look at this in your Bible. Look at it. It's in the Bible. And that Luke 17 where we read. And uh, 16 says, And he fell down on his feet at the feet of Jesus, giving him thanks. Giving him thanks. And Luke put it. And he was a Samaritan. Hey! And he was what? Why that clause or that phrase? Why did Luke write it? It means that the, the Samaritan did not know the way to worship God. They don't know perfect way to serve God. Remember the conversation of Jesus with the woman in the well? Who was a Samaritan? And the woman said to Jesus, well, 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 uh, our fathers worship here. And you are saying, it's, your people say it's in Jerusalem. And Jesus says even time is coming and now is this is the hour. First of all, he told her that you worship, you don't know what to worship. So the Samaritans don't know how to worship God very well. Samaritans don't know what God requires of them. Samaritans doesn't know that this, even if you don't know naturally, natural inclination is that when someone has done something for you like that, you will come turn around to say thank you. But they're, they're concerned with certificate. The, the, the rest ran for their own certificate. But look at what it says here in verse, uh, uh, verse 17. Look at Jesus Christ. Then you, you tell me what you think about this verse. Verse 17, Jesus answering and said, Were there not ten cleansed? I mean, this is an amazement to the master. It was an amazement to the master. He said, Were there not ten people? What? Cleans. If there were 10 people, look at it. If there were 10 people, he asked the question, where are the what? Nine. nine. Where are the nine? And my brothers and sisters, I stand here with shame to say that the statistics, I don't think it has changed even today. One out of 10. That can go back to the old memory lane and remember who they were. And remember their sufferings of life. And remember the what I've gone through. And to be where they are today. To kneel down and say, Lord, I thank you. I know it's not my. Let me show you something now. First Chronicle 29, please. First Chronicle 29. Can I have it? This was David. David, the king of Israel. David, the king of Israel, when he had planned to build a house for God, and God told him that, no, you're not going to build a house for me, but your son, 
uh, uh, Solomon will do that for me. And David made the preparation, put things down, purchased everything that is needed for the house of God, gave more than he had in mind. And the people that they came and those who were willing, they did one, they gave for the building of the house of God. When the giving was so much, was so much, the people began to praise God. They began to dance before the Lord. They began to, you know, thank the Lord. But look at the, 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 the proclamation of David unto the Lord. Look at what he said. Therefore, David blessed the Lord before all the what? Assembly. It's important, brothers and sisters, when you come to church, no, you've come to worship God. And you worship God in the presence of all, everybody. Worship God when you come to the assembly. It is time to worship God and we do that. And David said, and sometimes here, it is hard for us to have you speak out your word to God to your own hearing. Because it's very, very powerful. If David did not speak out these words, it would not have been written down. Hallelujah. Speak out the words unto God and let your ear hear what you are saying. I tell you, it will move you. It will lift you up and they put you in a position you never believe in. David here says, Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and what? Forever. God lives forever. And you as a child of God, you will live forever. Hallelujah. And then he says, yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in earth is what? Yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord. And you are exalted as the head over all things. Hey! This knowledge is powerful. If you know that God is in heaven and he has all honor and glory and power, he has created all this for himself, including you and me. Look at what he says. He said, both riches and honor, do what? Come from you. This is important. If I were you, I will mark it in my Bible and I will write it in my heart. Honor comes from God. Riches come from who? God, not from no matter what I have done in life, maybe I got my degree to get my job. It is God who teaches your hands how to make wealth. That's what the Bible says. He says, and you reign over all. So riches and honor comes from God, and God reign over riches and honor. Amen? Then he says, in your hands is power and might, and in your hands it is to make great and to give strength to all. Next. Now, then, then after saying that, now he said, now therefore, now this is, why, this is what he has in mind to tell God. Look at what he says. And now, our God, we thank you. <laughs> we thank you. And we praise your glorious name. Then he looked at himself and said, but who am I? Hey, who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? It's only when we humble ourselves and see that what we are, what we have, what we will be in future is of God. And then, in ascribing glory and honor, we have to give it to him because he has created all things for us. And he says, for all things come from who? From you. Do we believe that? All things means what? All things. All things come, come from you. And of your own, we have what? Giving you. God did not rent down those uh, golds, gold and all those, uh, you know, fine uh, 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 building materials from heaven. But he used the people of God to donate it to the house of God 
so that it will be used to build the house of God. So here David says that all things come from you and what we are giving unto you is your own already. Is your own already. But out of it, Lord, we use this as a token. We say, may your name be glorified. That's what he's saying here. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ, when he has said that, he said, we are done not ten cleans. We are the nine. Immediately. He said, there is not one found to come and do what? Give glory to God except what this Samaritan. But listen to this. The Lord Jesus Christ turned around. Look at verse 19. He says, and he said unto him, do what? He said unto him, do what? Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Now, these 10 people receive blessings. But look at this man, this, the Samaritan. His own blessing has been what? Confirmed. It has been confirmed. Not only the healing has been confirmed. From there, his salvation has been what? Confirmed. But look at the, the, the nine Jewish men who had gone. I don't know. I don't know actually. Uh, I, I, I don't know actually what made them to just run. Not to come back to the master and say thank you. But if I can use my sanctified imagination, I can see that this man, this man will be all, all, already be counting how much they have lost in business since they have been. They will go home, run back home, kiss their wife. Oh my goodness, wife, they have been missing for a long time. Have a good time. And with their children, sit around them and begin to tell them stories of what has happened. Then they will go out. Some of them who are not married would like to go out and visit their bar again. Go out and do whatever thing they want to do out there. But this one came back to the Lord. When he came and thanked, blessing follows. He opened another door. He would not have gotten if he had not thanked. Amen? So that brings me to another point that we will make it very, simple, very, very simple. Which is noticing and thanking. Noticing and do what? If you can notice what God has done for you, you can be thankful. If you notice it, you can be what? You can be thankful. That's what I see down here. That's the way thanksgiving is. Thanksgiving is giving thanks for the gift given. And then we are blessed again. And that's why I encourage every child of God here to cultivate thanks, you know, the heart of thanksgiving. Amen? Because we live in a, an age that, is, uh, that has a sense of scat, scarcity. They say, oh, this is going to run out. Oh, my, my finance will run out. Oh, this will run out. But I encourage every one of us here in this church that your dependence will not be on your job. You go to do your job and do your job perfectly. Do as, as it is that you're getting your paycheck there. But your confidence will not be in that job. Your confidence shall always be in God. We have been warned in the scriptures. My son, my daughters, when riches increases, do not put your confidence in what? In them. But rather let it be in God. Because if something happens, because riches have wings to fly. One day they flew into your house. You are so excited. You put your confidence because of that. You know. But so, but when they when they fly into your house, God has allowed them to do so. Amen? Amen. Never you remove your confidence from God because they can fly away. They can fly away the next morning. And you know the story very, very well of people who have come through that. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, um, I, I read something about uh, Joyce Myers. He, some of you know about her. He's a Christian writer as well and a speaker. And he says something that is so outstanding, which I believe so much. He says that I am not where I need to be, but I thank God that I am not where I used to be. Although I have not arrived where I need to be, but I thank God that I am not where I used to be. Hallelujah. If you look at yourself, you see there has been a great change in your life. A great change, my brothers and sisters. Yeah. God says, be content with what you have and be thankful. If you are content, be what? 
thankful. Thank God. Whatever thing you do, do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Always giving glory. Always being thankful to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So be thankful, brothers and sisters. It's a simple word of gratitude can open up a word of abundance unto you. Abundance of grace. Abundance of mercy from the almighty God. And this is the person I look unto. A person that has a, a humble spirit and a contrite spirit. The person who humbles at my word. If we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, he will do what? He will lift us up. Brothers, personally myself standing out here, I have a lot to thank God for. I have a lot to thank God for. Looking at my history, oh my goodness, I have a lot to thank God. I told you a story when I was growing up in school. We were in a toilet. We were digging a toilet as an assignment given to us by school. I was in that hole digging. And the fr people that are up there, up there, you know, watching to bring out the sand, all of them left. I was in that hole, in that digging. And I was digging and I'm digging. I didn't know that they have gone. All of a sudden, what I saw, what I saw happen was something came into the hole. I was deep down. I didn't know what was going outside. And it was something like a, it's a hole, but it becomes like a shovel. Somebody dropped a shovel. You know the toilet, how the, how the hole is. So I was there and digging. And this person came, never knew that somebody was there. They came to dig. Another group of students came to dig their own portion in that one. So never knew that somebody was there. He just dropped in like a shovel into the hole. What I saw was what just went through my back like this and hit me in the, in, in, in the, in the center of my back. Oh, my goodness. I turned around. I saw it. It was a shovel. I screamed in that dark, dark hole. I screamed and I screamed and I screamed. And uh, the, the, they say, oh, somebody's inside, somebody's inside, somebody's inside. And immediately they, they, they brought a ladder. They brought a ladder and sent it down. And I took it and I came out from that hole. This, this shovel just went through my head like this. I said, oh God. And when I'm growing up, I begin to think about it. I said, oh God, I'm very grateful and thankful unto you. If not, I will not be standing out here today to minister unto the people of God. But God spared my life. Okay, it came to a point in time, my life, that uh, I became a pastor. And uh, I had this inclination within me that I have to go to study. I have to study before I can continue. And uh, the pressure in those days, uh, you know, uh, instead of uh, encouraging ministers to study, they are being discouraged that because we are believing that because we are believing that Jesus will come the next day, you know. And it was a time of revival. And if you can, if you can feel the vibe of that moment, I tell you, see, you think that Jesus will not stay up to one year, but then I have the inclination, and I, I almost been swayed away, but nevertheless, I had a revelation in the night. And I saw it. I woke up at night and I began to write what God told me about coming to the States. I never knew that there was going to be a church like this. But when I think about those things, I say, oh God, I thank you. I thank you. God has been so gracious to me. God has been so gracious to me. And I come over here with a short time. My family joined me. And there we are here. And God has been increasing my family. Bringing more daughters into my family. Bringing sons into my family. I am very, very grateful standing out here. Look at my grandkids. I look at them. I remember those at home. Just, just like a carbon copy. My wife was telling me the other day, oh, this one looks like your brother's, your, 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 your ne um, uh, nephew's uh, son. I say, yeah, it's the same blood. It's the same blood. Praise the Lord. I am happy. I am happy God has blessed me. And I'm very much, I'm very happy that God has put me into your midst here. Make me a part of you. I am very, very happy. I am thankful. In fact, I kneel down with, with my wife. We thank God for you, all of you, God has brought in here. And God, we never knew that we we're going to take care of people of God like this. I came here with a mind that uh, when I come over here, I study and I'll go back home and continue the work over there. But I came over here and God says, you know, here, you are going to start off something here. And we started it. And here we are today. This, family, this church family has been a blessing to people 
whom you have not even seen around here. A lot of people, you know how America is, is in, is in Africa that people, if you go to this city, you stay in that city forever and ever. But in, in, in America, people will live here one year, they are in Las Vegas. From Las Vegas, their job will move them to Dallas. Their boy job will move to New York. People are moving just like that. And you know, we are in a city of a military city. We call it a military city. We have a military family here, a lot of them. Sometimes they will be moved to this place and to that place. And when they have come in here, I trust that the, the church, God has touched their life through this church. And they continue to go and to bloom where they are planted. Praise the Lord. So I'm grateful unto God that he allowed me, you know, uh, us to be able to be a part of you. And you have taken us as the servants of God as well. I am grateful unto God. And I thank you. I thank God on your behalf that you are beginning. Some of us are beginning to understand the difference between religiosity and uh, Christianity. You can now differentiate between both. That it is important that you have a personal commitment to God. A personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You can know the difference now. We are very, very grateful. I am grateful that God has prepared a place called home. That our, 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 our expectation is not only in this world. That we have another place we are going to. And I tell you, I am very grateful unto God that we all are holding together to achieve something to the glory of God, even in this part of the community. God knows why he brought us here and gave us this building. He knows why he brought us here. So we, as we hold our hands together and walk to the glory of God, God will fulfill what he has in mind for us. And for, to you, finally, to you, I don't know with all the things that have done, been said and done today, if something has sparked in your mind that you want to give glory to God. Some of us have parents that we need to call aside and say, Dad, Mom, I am thankful. I thank God for Gustin's testimony, uh, a genius testimony this morning. He moves my heart. You may not understand, but he moved my heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. You have parents that you need to talk to. Not only they understand, they know I love them. No, 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 don't, no. Speak it out. God knows we love him, didn't we? But the thing is that we have to speak it out. Speak some fine words. Speak some something from the bottom of our heart willingly. And call the mother, call the father and say, Dad, I love you. I thank you for God has given you to me or me to you as your, father, as your child. Tell them, express that gratitude unto them. Amen? And some of you who have been probably, you, have, you are having animosity against your parents. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You are hurting yourself. If you are bearing grudges against your parents, you are hurting yourself according to this book, which is true. So my advice to you is this. If you have any ought against your parents, please find a way to reconcile. Even if they have done something to you or against you that no one has ever done before, forgive them. Leave vengeance unto God. It's not our duty to repay any man. And when you see yourself repaying someone for the evil they have done against you, you are playing God. And God will not share his glory with any man. God is the great judge. Amen? Amen. Your duty is to forgive. Forgive your parents. Give them honor. And parents, please. I don't know what they have done. But forgive them. Pray for them. Receive them. Amen? That is our responsibility as parents. We are parents. Look at God in heaven. How we sin against him. How we put him down. If don't, don't recognize him in our lives. Yet, he continued to bear with us. He continued to bear with us until the day we come back to him. So bear with your children. Bear with them. You have a great expectation, but they are here. Don't get upset about that. Keep on encouraging them. Hallelujah. Keep on encouraging them and they will come. 
to the perfect will of God for their lives. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. What about people who have helped you in life? Somebody says, I made it. I, I, I made myself. I would say, yeah, that's American English. Self-made. I'm somebody who is self-what? Made. I made it. Therefore, therefore, nobody can tell me what to do. Let me tell you something. On your way, you met people. You don't know the way, but you met people. Who told you the way? They don't know, but they, they told you who to talk to. And that person, we talk to somebody who knows the way, and they gave you the way, show you the way. And you follow that, the, that way and become successful. And then you see you made it. People God placed in your lives. People God brought to your ways. Speak to them. Tell them you are grateful. I am very thankful for what God has done in my life through you. Hallelujah. Last week, somebody called from Dallas and spoke to my wife. This lady was speaking and crying. She said to her, I'm going to say it because she's not here, actually, but and what she says is the truth. She says that when she was in San Diego, because she was here for several years with us before their jo her job moved her. When she was in San Diego, one, eve one evening, I think we have an evening fellowship. It was a midweek service. That's the way they found us. So they were passing by and her way the hand was being clapped. And they, she was walking with her two ch younger children. And they heard the hand being clapped. They looked. It was a church. They walked in. He said, kids, let's go in here. Let's go in here. They walked into the church and they sat down. And uh, it was so like, like that. And uh, my wife went to sit with them and they began to talk to them. It so happened that at the close of that very service, she gave money to that lady. She was moved to give money to that lady. And this lady could not believe it. She didn't know what she was doing. And this lady could not believe it. Why? Because she was walking with the children hungry. And she was praying. She was a Christian. She was praying, oh God, can you do something? We need this amount to be able to take care of this, you know, to feed the children tonight. 